Good evening, everyone, and welcome once again to our evening prayer for today, Saturday, the 15th of June, 2024. So welcome, one and all, to our evening prayers. We join together for this short period. And um, this evening we remember Evelyn Underhill. She was a mystic and a spiritual writer who around 1941, well, of course, this is before my time, but as a teenager, I was very intrigued by her writings and followed her even to this day. So we remember Evelyn Underhill. And when we come to our special prayers, I will include one of her prayers, which is one of my favorites. So listen up and let's prepare. O Lord, make haste to help us. O Lord, make speed to save us. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night. To you be praise and glory forever. As darkness falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. By the light of Christ, your living word, dispel the darkness of our hearts, that we may walk as children of light and sing your praise throughout the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I be afraid? Though a host encamp against me, my heart shall not be afraid. And though there rise up war against me, yet will I put my trust in him. One thing have I asked of the Lord, and that alone I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord for all the days of my life, to behold the fair beauty of the Lord, and to seek his will in his temple. In the day of trouble, he shall hide me in his shelter, In, upon a rock, and I will offer dwelling a great oblation with great gladness. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And so that this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Our appointed psalm for this evening is Psalm 66. Psalm 66, and then we'll read it, and then we will have a short commentary on it so that we can ponder. It is Psalm 66, not 65, but 66. All the earth shall worship you, O Lord. Be joyful in God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Sing the glory of his praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. Because of your great strength, your enemies shall bow before you. All the earth shall worship you. Sing to you. Sing praise to your name. Come now and behold the works of God. How wonderful he is in his dealings with humankind. He turned the sea into dry land. He passed the river they passed through on foot. There we rejoiced in him. 
In his might, he rules forever. His eyes keep watch over the nations. Let no rebel rise up against him. Bless, O oh God, O oh you peoples. Make the voice of his praise to be heard, who holds our souls in life and suffers not our feet to slip. For you, O oh God, have proved us. You have tried us as silver is tried. You brought us into the snare. You laid heavy burdens upon our backs. You let enemies ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us out into a place of liberty. I will come into your house with burnt offerings. I will pay you my vows, which my lips uttered and my mouth promised when I was in trouble. I will offer you fat burnt sacrifices with the smoke of rams. I will sacrifice oxen and goats. Come and listen, all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he has done for my soul. I called out to him with my mouth and his praise was on my tongue. If I had nursed evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But in truth, God has heard me. He has heeded the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, who has not rejected my prayer, nor withheld his loving mercy from me. All the earth shall worship you, O Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. How generous oh, is your goodness, O oh God! How great is your salvation! How faithful is your love! Help us to trust you in trial, and praise you in deliverance, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, let's have a short commentary by Tim Keller on that psalm. And then we'll pray together. Make his praise glorious. Everyone is called to praise God. That's in verse 1. The content of this praise is God's name. Verse 2. All the things he is and all that he has done. The character of this, this praise is to be glorious. Verse 2. What is glorious praise, we ask? Glory has connotations of weightiness, dignity, magnificence, and beauty. Glorious worship is exuberant, never half-hearted. It is attractive not off-putting. It is awesome, never sentimental. It is brilliant, not careless. It points to God, not to the speakers. It fits its great object. It seeks to be as glorious as the one it praises. So worship should be never trivial, never pretentious, there is nothing more evangelistic, nothing that will win the world more than glorious worship. And we remember Psalm 100 when we say that. So let us pray on the Psalm 66 that we just read. Lord, so much of the public worship of your church is indeed trivial and pretentious. Let our church and churches across the world begin to praise you, to praise you in spirit and in truth. Grant us anointed worship, so beautiful that it attracts even those whose hearts are hardened toward you. Amen. I don't know if this is an appropriate place to say a prayer. 
written by Evelyn Underhill. I've got her book, Evelyn Underhill's prayer book. And um, it was edited by Robin Wigley Carr. And what shall I, what prayer shall I choose? Dedication. She prayed about dedication. It says, Oh God, let it be our personal prayer as well. So we really enter into the spirit of this evening. Oh God, who is able to do all things, turn us unto you. Renew our spirits, enlighten our understandings, sanctify our wills, increase our strength of body and soul, that we may depend only on you, fear and love you above all things and serve you fervently, and that in all our efforts and desires, we may conform ourselves to your blessed will and pleasure. We ask you finally to impart to us your abundant, effectual grace, by which we may be able to begin and lead a perfect and holy life, and to serve you perfectly and thoroughly even to the end. For therefore, O God, you did give us being, that we might employ it in your service alone. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? That's Evelyn Underhill, who we are commemorating this evening. Okay. We have our first Bible reading, and that's from Job, Job 25 to 26. Then Bildad, the Shuhite, answered, Dominion and fear are with God. He makes peace in his high heaven. Is there any number to his armies? Upon whom does his light not arise? How then can a mortal be righteous before God? How can one born of woman be pure? If even the moon is not bright and the stars are not pure in his sight, how much less a mortal who is a maggot and a human being who is a worm? Then Job answered, this is all about Job, how you have helped one who has no power, how you have assisted the arm that has no slingship. How you have counseled one who has no wisdom and given such good advice, with whose help have you uttered words and whose spirit has come forth from you. The shades below tremble, and the waters and their inhabitants. Sheol is naked before God, and Abaddon has no covering. He stretches out Zaphon up over the void, and hangs the earth upon nothing. He binds up the waters in his thick clouds, and the clouds is not torn open by them. He covers the face of the full moon, and spreads over it his cloud, he has described a circle on the face of the waters at the boundary between light and darkness. The pillars of heaven tremble and are astounded at his rebuke. By his power he stilled the sea and by his understanding he struck down Rahab. By his wind the heavens were made fair. His hand pierced the fleeting serpent. These are indeed but the outskirts of his ways, and how small a whisper do we hear of him. But the thunder of his power, who can understand? This is the word of the Lord. God's love was revealed among us so that we might live through Jesus. So, beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was revealed among us, that God sent his only Son into the world 
so that we might live through him. And this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the expiation of our sins, for our sins as well. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we ought also to love one another. For if we love one another, God abides in us, and God's love will be perfected in us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. God's love was revealed among us, so that we might live through Jesus. Good. So our second reading is taken from Romans, Romans chapter 11, starting at verse 13. Now I'm speaking to you, Gentiles, that's you and me, inasmuch then as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, this is Paul speaking, I glorify my ministry in order to make my own people jealous and thus save some of them. That's Israel, the Jewish nation. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will the acceptance be but life from the dead? If the part of the dough offered as first fruits is holy, then the whole batch is holy. And if the root is holy, then the branches also are holy. But if some of the branches were broken off, and you, a wild olive stock, was grafted in their place to share the rich root of the olive tree. Do not vaunt yourselves over the branches. If you do vaunt yourselves, remember that it is not you that support the root, but the root that supports you. I will say, branches were broken off so that I might be grafted in. That is true. They were broken off because of their unbelief. But you stand only through faith. So do not become proud, but stand in awe. For if God did not spare the natural branches, perhaps he will not spare you. Note then the kindness and the severity of God. Severity towards those who have fallen, but God's kindness towards you provided you continue in his kindness. Otherwise, you also will be cut off. And even those of Israel, if they do not persist, if they do not persist in unbelief, they will be grafted in. Once again, for if you have been cut off from what is by nature a wild olive and grafted, contrary to nature, into a cultivated olive tree, how much more will these natural branches be grafted back into their own olive tree? That's a word of warning there. So glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Let's have a suitable chant. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, and that glory may dwell in our land. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in your land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other, that glory may dwell in our land. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. And Mary sings. This song is known as the Magnificat, and we do well to repeat it as we remember Mary in our prayers. You have looked with favor on your lowly servant, from this day, all generations will call me blessed. 
My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. He has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those that fear him. From generation to generation, he has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy. The promise made to all ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Yes, you have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call her blessed. Amen. So now we come to our special prayers and we give thanks, first of all, for this wonderful day that we have enjoyed. And as we come to the ending of the day, we thank God and ask for perfect rest during the night. We include prayers for peace, peace in our hearts, peace in our families, and peace in the world at large. And we have a special prayer for just that. We have in, we remember individuals and the, their needs, and we have a list of names, and we also include all those who are not on the list in our prayers for them, individual prayers. We pray for our homes, our families, our friends, and all those whom we love. And whose time, those whose time is spent caring for others in the various professions, and even just at home, for our loved ones. We pray for those who are close to death. This is a very special time for them. And we pray for those who have given up hope. We also pray for the worship of the church. It's very important. And we ask God in his mercy to hear our prayer. Lord, graciously hear us. Um, we pray those on our prayer list. I'll just enumerate. And then also for those who haven't been included on this list, but we still pray for them that if they're sick, they may be brought to good health. And if they're suffering in any way, mind, body, or spirit, that they too will be helped by your prayers for them. God in his mercy will hear us. So we pray for Doreen. We pray for Jean and Walter, Monica, Sue, Daisy, and her family. We pray for Veronica and Chester. We pray for Dolly and Desmond. Jean, Jean Murphy. We pray for Joanna. We pray for Pat and Ray. We pray for Pauline, Pauline Haywood and Pauline from our congregation. We pray for Muriel, David, David Martins. We pray for Suri, Suri Akala Johnson. And we pray for Veronica, Monica, and her daughter, Cheryl. We pray for Charity, Hipper, Duke. We pray for Radcliffe and Pauline from another congregation, but we pray for them nonetheless. We pray for Archdeacon Elwin and his family, who is to retire soon and who is much better from his illness. We continue to pray for Andy and Anita, Yuna, Noel, Jackie, and Maxine Garrison and her family that they will get the suitable accommodation when the time comes. And we pray for Atlee, who is getting better and better by the day. We pray for Anne and Richard. 
there in Wales. And we pray for Elliot, who is a friend of Jenny. And it's Jenny's birthday today, so we wish her a very happy birthday today. And Jake and Reverend Jeremy. Jake is Reverend Jeremy's son. We pray for Kiana. We pray for Anne and granddaughter and stepmom, Lucy. As I said, all those who are not on this list but are suffering in any way, we ask God to help and restore them to normalcy so that they can praise and worship his great and holy name. A special prayer for our church. We say, God of mission, who alone brings growth to your church, send your Holy Spirit to give vision to our planning, wisdom to our actions, and power to our witness. Help our church to grow in numbers, in spiritual commitment to you, and in service to our local community. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We also pray for peace in the Holy Land, various lands around the world, because there's so much conflict and fighting and disagreements. We pray about this, Lord. Almighty God, hear the cry of our hearts as we hold before you the people of the Holy Land. We be near those who have lost lives and loved ones and be a sure rock to those who are in terror this day. We pray, Lord, that through your spirit of wisdom and mercy, conflict may cease and that the leaders of the nations may work together for peace and justice. As you wept over Jerusalem, so we ask that you hear the prayers of those who weep this day for your holy land. Remember the innocent sufferers in Israel and Gaza, the children, the elderly, the vulnerable. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And those we on our list, we lift to God and those we hold in our hearts, praying for their health, their well-being, and their sense of hope. Without hope, we suffer even more. So give them a sense of hope. We pray, Lord, that even when loved ones cannot physically be together, they would not feel apart. We ask God's help in our communicating, or connecting, and or caring. The three C's. Remember that? We ask God's help in our communicating, in our connecting, and in our caring. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. And now our special collect for today. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin and have sent the spirit of your Son into our hearts, whereby we cry and call you Father. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service, that we and all creation may be brought to the glorious liberty of the children of God. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior taught us, so we pray. Let us join together in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We pray that prayer with confidence, knowing that it is a prayer 
that he gave to his disciples when they asked him, Lord, teach us to pray. So that prayer covers well as everything, and it's so good for us to say daily and mean it, get the sense of it rather than just recite it. Okay? So in conclusion, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. So good night, everyone. God bless you. See you next week. God's willing.